This is Dr. Alan Watson. I'm an ophthalmologist practicing in Missouri, and we're discussing the growth processes and some of the things associated with growth. Hair is a different phenomenon, how that grows. There's different phases of how uh, hair grows from the hair bulb and ends up growing out, but generally the part that we see externally is just a protein that's been extruded from the hair bulb and that's controlled by different factors in how the hair shaft develops. Some people's hair shaft are different shapes and the different shape of the shaft of the hair will determine whether or not that individual has straight hair. The cross section of those hair shafts is round and so as it grows out, it grows uniformly and grows straight. Curly hair has a much more elliptical cross-sectional diameter and it allows the hair to fold on itself and that can make curly hair. There's disulfide bonding in those protein molecules and so even super curly hair like kinky hair, those hair shafts are quite flat in cross-section and that increases the surface area of that hair shaft and that's why some of those individuals the hair can frequently break and splinter and end up frequently ending dry and broken but the ultimate length of the hair before it falls out is determined by the onlaga phase of the hair developing and some individuals have very long onlaga phases so um, like Crystal Gale, she could grow her hip, her hair all the way down to her hips. Um, a lot of women, their hair won't get that long because it tends to fall out before the shaft reaches that length. Um, similarly, even pubic hair has a life cycle, and once the hair is at its full extent, it'll fall out and a new one will take its place. Um, so those areas generally in individuals aren't even trimmed because they won't get past a certain length. And this has been Dr. Alan Watson discussing the growth processes that affect both men and women. Thank you.